wishing you all a delightful and serene evening. Hearty welcome to this virtual meet where connections and inspiration await. Let us embark on an enlightening exploration of the captivating topic, Recreating the Positive Narrative by Dr. Mary Jayanti Manoj, Associate Professor in English, Holy Cross College Autonomous, Tittirapalli. I quote Nelson Mandela, the youth of today are the leaders of tomorrow. Dear participants, we are thrilled to have you join us in this meaningful event centered around recreating the positive narrative in collaboration with we for youth As we embark on this inspiring journey together, we invite every one of you to take a moment to explore their website, which can be accessed at www.v4youth.com. On their website, you will find a wealth of valuable resources, including mentorship opportunities, support groups, and motivational content that are all designed to enhance the emotional well being of youth. It's an excellent platform for both young individuals and those supporting them, like parents and teachers, as they work together to empower the next generation. Moreover, we encourage you to stay connected and updated with the latest developments and insights by subscribing to their YouTube channel. By doing so, you'll gain access to a treasure trove of engaging and informative video content that reflects the heart of we for youths mission. Through their YouTube channel, you'll discover enlightening talks, success stories, and discussions led by inspirational speakers who are passionate about empowering and supporting youth. It's a platform where positive narratives come to life, leaving a lasting impact on the way we view ourselves and the world around us. So seize this opportunity to explore their website and immerse yourselves in the abundance of knowledge, support, and inspiration that we for youth has to offer. And by subscribing to the YouTube channel, you'll be unlocking a gateway to personal growth and transformation through the power of storytelling and positivity. If you are interested in receiving the QR code for subscribing to the YouTube channel via WhatsApp, we kindly request you to provide your name and phone number to Mrs. Angel Ravindran. You can send this information to her at the phone number 999 5601 Once you share your details, Mrs. Angel Ravindran will be able to promptly send you the QR code, enabling you to subscribe to the YouTube channel and stay connected with the latest video content and updates from the organization. Please be assured that your information will be treated with utmost confidentiality and it will be solely be used for the purpose of sending the QR code to facilitate your subscription. We look forward to having you as an active member of our community. Thanks in advance. Now it's time to introduce the speaker of the day. It's my honor to introduce the distinguished speaker of the day, someone whose accomplishments and expertise have made a significant impact in our field. Dr. M. Mary Jayanti, currently serving as an Associate Professor of English and Dean of International Affairs at Holy Cross College Autonomous Trichirapalli, has played a pivotal role in various leadership positions throughout her esteemed career. 
She served as the vice principal from 2019 to 2022, dean of students from 2015 to 2018, fine arts coordinator from 2013 to 2016, and editor of the college magazine from 2006 to 2012, showcasing her diverse range of responsibilities and contributions within her college. Dr. Jayanti's expertise and dedication were also recognized when she became a member of the steering committee for the fourth cycle NAC accreditation team visit to her college in February 2020. Dr. Jayanti has been passionately dedicated to the field of teaching for a remarkable span of 18 years, finding immense joy in serving first generation learners and students from regions with limited educational opportunities. As a scholarly researcher, specializing in English and literature, she has achieved significant recognition with the publication of 28 research articles in esteemed national and international peer reviewed journals, including those approved by UGC, Scopus, and Web of Science. Additionally, Dr. Jayanti has provided invaluable guidance to five PhD candidates and currently continues to mentor two more in their academic pursuits. Dr. Mary Jayanti is an author with two published books and has received awards such as the Dr. Sister Donna Best Researcher Award. She has also been recognized for her contributions in cultural coordination, winning awards and accolades for her work. Dr. Mary JNT is a certified LD professional trainer with experience in teaching, training, and developing professionals. She is a mentor in teaching methodologies, group leadership, and communicative calm soft skills. As a published poet and writer, she has contributed to numerous national and international journals and anthologies and has conducted academic visits to various countries. Ma'am, we eagerly anticipate your speech. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Ms. Vinolin. Thank you so much uh, for your generous introduction. And a word of uh, thanks and gratitude to the V4 Youth team for their consistent contribution to uplift positive environment for the youth. So the team, I've been associated with the team for quite some time and uh, made their mission continue. And I'm so happy that I can be a part of it in small way. So a warm good evening to all of us here, uh, to all the youth out there who would also listen to this uh, when it is recorded and when it is on the YouTube and to, the, uh, to all the youthful spirit that is within us, no matter what our age is. Today's uh, topic is recreating the positive narrative. So what does this in simple words mean? Every day we listen to, we speak a lot of words. Whatever we speak becomes our reality. Our words create our reality. We keep speaking to others or we keep speaking to ourselves. What we tell others and what we tell ourselves matters. I, I very jokingly say that, is it that we are inclined to the ooh, ah, ouch expressions of life every day? Or is it the wow moments of life that we focus on? Because life gives us a lot of experiences every day. And we have moments we, where we can be very limiting and disempowering and really frustrated with things that can happen around us. At the same time, to the same event, we can find a streak of light and find the wow moments of life. In the very beginning itself, let me give a disclaimer that in any way, I am not promoting what is called as toxic positivity, meaning to say 
Uh, it is a trend to, to be positive. It's a good reminder, but that doesn't mean when we are going through pain, when something is not okay with us, we just try to ignore that and try to have a kind of pseudo positivity. I'm speaking about amidst everything, when things are high or low, what is the kind of attitude that we can develop is reflected through our words and our words can always direct our lives. And when there are things that are low, we can address that, but we need not delve or dwell in it deeper, but then we can find ways and means and support to really come out of it. And our words really mark what we are inside. What is in the inside comes out. With, I hope uh, with that introduction, let me just share my screen for the presentation. The topic, as I told you, is recreating the positive narrative. Uh, when I say narrative, the narration is the words and the language that we tell ourselves in intrapersonal communication and the words that we use for others when we communicate. That is the narrative. So quite often, we might be directed to use limiting words, which can always put us very low and bring in a kind of a slow range of life. But at the same time, is it possible to have a kind of a positive outlook? In order to uh, really understand this topic, let me take you to the next slide where it is important for us to understand what we tell ourselves and what we tell others matters. The language that we use matters. Now let us have a look at the first set of words. Uh, it can be uh, that we are in various stages of life where we try to repeat to ourselves or to others quite often, I'm alone, okay, there's a job loss and we are out of a quarantine. So that kind of loneliness that has taken over or I'm anxious, I'm, I feel very used, I feel very depressed. No one understands me. I'm very sick. And we used a lot of words like COVID-19 and lockdown because that was part of a vocabulary at that point of time, death. Uh, I, I feel very low. So when I keep repeating these words, when we keep repeating these words, every day, all the time, it is disempowering. At the same time, it is not that these things are not happening. These things are happening to all of us and we are in different phases of life. But how much of it are we focusing? What is it that we are concentrating on? What is it that we are magnifying? Now, let's have a look at these words. I'm happy. I'm loved. I'm blessed. I'm healthy. I'm positive. I'm talented. I'm gifted. I'm joyful. I'm energetic. So how often in a day do we repeat these empowering words to ourselves? and to others. Trust me, the energy and the focus that we exude is highly empowering when we can consciously make a shift from disempowering to empowering words, from limiting words to empowering words, rescripting from disempowering to empowering words, and how we can slowly be aware of it and consciously take toddler step to make it an everyday action or uh, routine in our daily life. So at the end of this short uh, session, what we would really come to realize is to understand the need for a paradigm shift in the way we communicate and practice positive interpersonal and also intrapersonal communication. And uh, I will just introduce uh, the youth and for all of us to Martin Buber's concept of communication and a technique from NLP, that is Neuro Linguistic Program, called as the at effect and at cause technique. So as I told earlier, the words we say matter. So if speech is the greatest gift of God, then language is the highest invention of man. I'm sure we all really celebrate this gift of speech because the only living organic uh, uh, creatures or people 
uh, are, are the people. The only living uh, beings are the people who can have the gift of speech. And man is inventive and we have so many forms of language. So when we use language in any language, what we say is important and how we say it is very, very important. Let me just start with a story. We have the story of the soothsayer. Once there was a king who had a dream and in his dream, he, felt, he had this vision that he lost all his tooth. And this dream awakened him and disturbed him. He immediately called all his ministers and he had a special minister to interpret his dreams. And he was known as the minister uh, who could uh, do dream interpretation or otherwise soothsayer. So when he spoke about this, the dream interpreter minister with a very sad face came forward and said, Oh my king. I only wish this dream was not true and this didn't happen to you. The meaning of the dream is everybody around you will die and everybody from your army, your soldiers and your people, your friends, your relatives, every one of them will die. Your family will die. Your parents will die and uh, your Children will die, your wife will die, and he kept on building on it. And the king said, Stop it. I don't want to hear this. I don't want to hear anything of this. Now, all of you go back to sleep. He goes very angrily, goes back to sleep because kings and leaders never like anything negative or uh, that which is not going to really help them. Again, when he slept, he had the same dream again, and this disturbed him. When this disturbed him, he thought he has to find an answer. So the very next day, he announces that anybody who gives the right interpretation of the dream will be rewarded with 1,000 gold coins. There were a few who wanted to do, but they were frightened because what the dream interpreter earlier said was true. And if people are going to repeat the same interpretation, the king is going to be annoyed. So in saying so, they just refrained. But after 10 days... There is a person from the neighborhood, neighborhood country who walks in with a loud voice. He says, long live the king. Great is his valor. You are the strongest of all. You are the greatest of all. You are the valiant of all. You are the one with forethought. You will live long. You will live longer and you will live the longest and you alone will live the longest. And he repeated, you alone will live the longest. And that is the meaning of this dream, dear king. The king was super happy. He was very happy. So is that the meaning of the dream? And we all understand that this dream interpreter gave him the same message. The previous one said, you will be alive. He didn't say you even, you will be alive. Everybody around you will die. So if you have to interpret you alone will live the longest how can a king live longest it is only when uh, he has outlived others right the story ends and this story is a classic example of what you say is important and how you say is important this shows the power of language and in saying so there is truth in the interpretation it is how you want to see the situation. And this is something that we have to focus on. And we usually say, use more of the do language and do not use the don't language. For example, when we give instructions to children, to students, we always try to say, don't do that. Don't shout. Don't take that. Don't listen to that, okay? So a lot of don't, don't, don't. Rather, it is important. Rescripting the positive narrative is focusing on the do language. If you don't want the student to shout, you have to say, be silent. That's what we want. If you don't want somebody to take something, to if it will break, you can say, keep it safe. So focusing on the don't will always limit 
rather than focus on the do that will always be empowering. So in order to understand this healthy communication, one step is to understand the positive narrative, the how of it and what of it. For the how of it, I would like to use Martin Buber's I, it, I, you and I, thou uh, sentences. And for the what of it is the NLP uh, technique where at effect and at cost is used. Let me just explain that to you in simple terms. Martin Buber is an Austrian Israeli philosopher who speaks about I, it, I, you, and I, thou. This is a three stage conversation or three types of conversation that we always do in our daily life to understand this better. Whenever we go to a hotel or we meet a vendor, and when we are buying something, many a time we use at it or I it conversation, meaning to say you go into, say, Pothis or Chennai Silks or to any shop, you go there, there the salesperson or in a restaurant, the person who is there to serve you will be the ones who come and tell you what is available. We are not mindful of the person as a human being, but only address them in their social roles. We don't even look at them. The person can say, hi, hello, welcome. We don't even respond. We just go and use the business language. Do you have this? Do you have that? And sometimes when you don't make a pick when you're in the uh, clothes showroom, we just move it. We don't treat that person as human beings, but what we try to do is use them in social roles. Sometimes it happens even in a classroom where the students are just numbers or we say you, that green color, that blue color, where the person's identity is not seen as wholesome. This is important for us to understand whenever we have only I, it communication in relationships, in both formal and informal relationship, there is no deeper connection or transformation. It is only limited to I, it. It is objectified. Next is I, you. I, you communication comes with an effort to know the person. So when students are in the classroom, maybe the first day they don't know each other, but the next day they say, hi, where are you from? I'm from this place. And then it happens to our vendors. If the vendor doesn't come daily, the vegetable vendor or the milkman doesn't come daily. What happened to you? Yesterday, We, uh, I thought you would come. You told me your daughter is not well. Is she fine? So there is a kind of a personal step in where beyond the social roles, we see them as human beings and there is a kind of a connection. So this also maintains a kind of a good uh, interpersonal communication. I, thou communication is the innate quality of compassion and the time that an individual focuses to take to respond to every individual he or she passes by, irrespective of the social roles they play. Example, if Abdul Kalam has to walk into a place, he would greet the watchman and he would greet the scientist with the same respect. Thou is the archaic word for God and you are able to see the godliness or the respect for the other person and you are able to connect to that person in the whole essence. And Martin Buber says this, I, thou conversations, if they are part of your daily life, irrespective of to whom you are to speak and meet, that will always enable a positive narrative. And that will always make very healthy communication. And uh, next is the what of it. So when we, this, let us take some time to check on the sentences that is given. This is called as at effect and at cause. Look at the example in red. Our education system is at fault. So what can I do about it? How does that sound? And the same sentence in green. The education system may be at fault, but as a teacher or as a person, I can bring in a change in my classroom, right? So the same situation is there. The first example, it is an at effect language. It is limited by what happens and we blame and we avoid responsibility. 
The same situation prevails, but when we try to use the at cost language, we take responsibility. We look out for choices and possibilities. So are we governed by at effect language or at cost language? This example can give us a reality check. Now let's try this. I am fat because it is hereditary. So this is a kind of an at effect language so it have in case we have to change it or make a focus to speak an at cost language it can be this way i'm fat although it is hereditary i will work on it through proper diet and exercise so we take responsibility now let's see this example there are no opportunities for people with my specialization so there is a kind of an at effect language which just blames, uh, does not want to take responsibility, does just wants to give an excuse, and uh, it speaks about things that are not in our control. So in case we have to change it into an at cost language that is enabling that which can empower, that which helps us to find a reason to take things forward, there may be less opportunities for my specialization, but I can equip myself so that I find the I find I can find the exception to it. So it takes responsibility. So this recreation of the narrative is a conscious choice. Many a time when we do a language check, we might be limited with at effect language. We say this is like that. That is why I was not able to do. Uh, and uh, I, this was not uh, in my purview. But when we really want to focus on things to be taken forward, we try to find a way out, a possibility. And this kind of reconstruction or rescripting the thought process with at cost language can always be enabling. Now, why words matter? We all know or we come to know that there is so much of power in the words that we speak. The words that we speak always create our reality. So what are the kind of words? Um, this is an example of one such situation where we can think of the power of our words and thoughts. During the Second World War, we had war, war criminals. War criminals are uh, people, spies from the neighboring uh, countries uh, who get caught in other countries and they become war criminals and war criminals are entitled to death. And they had painful processes of death. And there is one such war criminal who is uh, awaiting his execution. And uh, the people there in charge, they come and say, uh, tomorrow is your death day. But then we have one good news for you. That one good news is you will have a painless death. For him, having lost his family, away from his family, there is no way out to um, reach out to his family, not been able to get back to his country. Death by itself is tormenting. And for him, it didn't mean whether it's uh, right or wrong when they said, like, it's going to be a painless death. Okay, death, yeah, fine. And usually, uh, war criminals were administered lethal injections poisonous injections which would cause a pain and um, they would they would ra ra rather within pain and they would die and uh, uh, sometimes what they would be do is as we all know they would be executed by hanging and uh, there were so many other painful ways but this person was uh, just oriented about how he would die he said he was told that, see, we will take an IV and that IV as we would uh, administer, we'll just administer it on your veins. And then this will be connected to a bottle where your blood will be connected, collected. And once all your blood is collected, I think you will have a painless death. So having said so, on the day of death, he was blindfolded. The first thing that he understood was, the IV was administered and there was the monitor which uh, uh, kept track of his heartbeat, right? And once it was administered, he was just waiting for him to himself to die. He was blindfolded. He couldn't see anything else. What happened was, what happened was 
after a few seconds when he was just relaxed and he was just he didn't know what was going to happen to him he hears the first drop of blood into the bottle you get this sound chot 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 for every drop of blood the sound that hit him he started perspiring because he knew the blood was going out of his body and he is closer to death he starts profusely um sweating and then say in two to and a half hours time he faints and then he dies the case is closed and there was a conference where there was a study of how people were executed the war criminals were executed and this case was presented and the presenters tell everything is true till the time we blindfolded him after injecting the iv but what was not true was not even one drop of blood was collected in the bottle the sound that the person heard was from a packet of blood that was attached and not even a drop of blood was out of his body so we didn't kill him it was his thought that he was going to die and what he was telling to himself killed him it was a case presented and that is the power of words what we tell ourselves matters and uh, hila baska says we have what is known as a uh, pineal gland which is a gland which registers the words that we say whenever we say like i will fail i will not do well that becomes a kind of a life script because that gets multiplied and children when the babies when they are born they are baby geniuses because when we notice babies nobody tells the baby to lift its head when it's time the mother doesn't train in that if it has to topple over we all know around 2 to 2 and a half months or 3 months uh, it the the range may differ the the child turns over nobody teaches the child this is the way you have to crawl okay it has an inner pilot by which uh, it can automatically uh, move on to the next stage but as these babies as we all grow up somewhere we are so much conditioned with the limiting words the negative criticism don't do this don't do that you are always like this that is something that goes and settles on the pineal gland and that will always even when we know we can do this i am sure there is a moment of doubt and sometimes the doubt is for a lifetime that just disables us this pineal gland is like an ic in a computer whatever you type in if you are going to type in kill or give birth it is just going to take it it is not going to understand the meaning likewise whatever is feeded inside the pineal gland that becomes the life pattern he says and uh, it is also like soil if you are going to uh, sow a grain of rice or if you are just going to plant a weed the soil is just going to give life to both so what you sow the words are like seeds that we sow and the power of words always create a reality so this is for our reflection what we tell ourselves what we allow ourselves to hear matters am i telling myself um i am always uh, not good for this i cannot do this um everybody else will do i cannot do it when we use so many can'ts and don'ts that limits our life let us continuously see what are the simple things even if you are able to lift up this pen it is an enabling act today if you have not done something properly think about even the smallest thing that you have done and repeatedly speak over it so that that gives you energy and of course as a mistake that's done remember there is always a next time for us to make a remedy and move on so what we tell ourselves and what we allow ourselves to hear it will always matter because the environment in which we are and the environment creates the kind of the life scripts that we always have and we as teachers elders the words that we speak to the youth we can it creates a lot of life energy right and uh, 
and for youth, what you tell yourselves, what is it? Do you see yourself? Do you see yourself as someone who is capable, able, strong, powerful, uh, creative, confident, vibrant? These words really build your life. Give a positive word, gift an enabling word to a friend every day. And I'm sure you get return gifts and that will always create an empowering uh, uh, environment for you. Positive narrative is always a language of understanding. And uh, the art of a positive narrative is be positive. When I say be positive, it is not in the sense of a toxic positivity. I've hurt myself, but I'm going to smile. No. Focus on things that can progress. Focus on things, even if you're stuck, what are the ways that can take you forward? If you're telling a person uh, to change something, tell the person what you want him or her to do rather than what you don't want him or her to do. And for example, uh, we want to tell someone to be punctual. Instead of telling stop coming, uh, stop coming so late, it's important we say, please come on time. And always when in a positive narrative, when we recreate only one request at a time, and that will always help the person to understand the change that is required. So let's see how the impact of recreating will help. I'm sure we have uh, children, students, and even when you are doing your research work, uh, we always feel this sentence. You, you always don't study when we have to uh, make it into an enabling sentence. If you make an effort, you can study. So from the don't language, to the do language. Repeatedly, I'm telling you, you will fail because you're not working hard or you're lazy. So you can say repeatedly, I'm telling you that you would succeed if you start focusing. This class is always mischievous, right? I want this class to be well behaved and don't talk or don't shout. Be silent, discuss softly. So the first set of examples are the don't language right focusing on the do language helps the pineal gland to absorb what is the action and bring in the change suppose you want your friend to improve in language i always say uh, this is a kind of a brri technique that uh, can help us no step by step to recreate the b is begin with the strength of the person when you want somebody to change something Focus on something that they already have. Maybe the person is punctual. So you begin with this and your conversation can be like this. You're punctual to the class. Then use a reflective question. The R is reflective question. Are you able to communicate effectively in English? So you don't say you don't communicate effectively in English. You are asking a reflective question wherein the person is thinking whether the person has to become aware of the need and then reinforce good practices. The next hour is reinforce good practices. Do you think focusing on your language skills will help you to be more effective? So everywhere you give them options and choices, and it is not that you force or you, what to say, advise them, which I'm sure they don't take, and initiate action. The BRRI is begin with the strength of the person, next reflective question, reinforce good practices, and initiate action, which is what would you like to do about it? So if you feel so, sometimes a conversation can stop either in the second or the third sentence. If the person has not understood the need, then you need to find out how to help the person understand the need. Without helping the person to understand the need, it is difficult to bring in the chain. So what would you like to do about it? Maybe this person should say, maybe I will read, I'll try to get your help. We will not prescribe, but we will allow them to find out a way. And there is always a healthier way to offer a constructive criticism uh, in speaking uh, to others, right? When you want to say something um, as youngsters, uh, when you speak to others, we can say, can I suggest something? Whenever you have an idea, you can say, can I suggest something? Wait for the answer. If you don't get an yes, it is as good as not saying. Would you mind considering this? I only thought this would help you. So these sentences in your own language, when you ask, is a sentence of respect where you really want to know if the other person is ready to receive what you have to offer. And next is how to agree to disagree. It's very, very important to understand that no two, even best of friends, 
or best of relations can have the same viewpoint all the time. A good healthy relationship is something where you know all the commonalities you have and all the differences that you uniquely celebrate. So when there is a difference of opinion, some of the most respectful ways or positive or healthy ways to communicate is, I'm sorry, I disagree with your comment. Excuse me, I feel that you may be wrong in your observation, but let me think about it. I'm sorry, I differ with you. Or simply, I'm sorry, I think we will agree to disagree. So here I would like to uh, bring in a story from the Solomon Islands. A writer writes that in the Pacific Ocean, you have what is called as the Solomon Islands. Here they had a, a practice where they had lumbering of trees. They had thick evergreen trees and the native uh, occupation is to lumber, cut down trees and send it down the river and uh, they will be paid for that. So when there are the three trunks are thick and big, it is very difficult to cut. So when it is very difficult to cut, there is a practice that the elders of the village climb up and they stay on the top, shout, yell and curse the tree for half a day and come down. And, the, and in the evening, the writer writes, the tree dies. And he also writes, I do not know whether this is true or not, but one thing I can understand from this story is yelling and shouting will always kill the spirit. It is very, very important in any situation, it is important to find a balance, not to yell, but to tell. It's a very strong reminder. The more we try, the more we will fail, but we will try till we get that. And if we fail at one point of time, remember there is a next time for us to consciously tell and not yell. And in Africa, you have this sacred practice where if a person has committed a mistake, they follow an action of reinforcement, wherein the person who has committed the mistake is made to stand in the middle and the elders of the village are standing around him or her and they repeatedly take turns to tell all the good deeds that the person has done in the past to a point where the person repents and cries and he is reinforced of his good nature. What a beautiful practice. If we can always take time to speak more of the good things that we can see in the other person, we build them, we support them to be the better versions of themselves. So with all these things, I just have a few questions for us to ponder as we speak this. So when was the last time you appreciated someone, your parents, your friends, your teachers, and if there are elders watching our children? Yes. When was the last time we did that? The more often we do, the more often we can give. We, we, we always um, enable and empower others when we can uh, even when we have to sit uh, at a table for lunch, if there is something good, take time to say. When something is not good, okay, if there is no salt in your sambar, take the salt, put it, eat it, smile, be happy. Maybe the next time you can remind the person. But not that, not required, okay? Respecting the kind of effort that goes into making all these things. And uh, when your parents do a lot of things, um, not focusing on just what they have not done or what is that they delay, focusing on one appreciation, one simple appreciation for the love that you receive from your teachers, your friends. That really gives you a kind of happiness, no? When you, when you give, you also receive happiness. Next question. What are the different words you use to appreciate people? Okay. So just good, kind. Okay. You're fabulous. You're fantastic. Um, it can be superlative, but do mean, mean the words that you say. Be very specific. Rather than telling it was good, you can say, somebody comes and shows you the drawing. You can say, 
the way you've used colors in the picture is fantastic rather than saying fantastic be very specific and that really adds value to the person and to the work and what is the best appreciation you've received maybe you can just think about how that appreciation is something that brings a lot of smile and happiness rebuilds you every time reconnects you to your essence that makes you uh, the person you are created to be so when we can uh, we can just take time to reflect on that i'm sure when you are going to involve yourself to think about it you're going to just smile yes so positive communication is your choice of words the choice of words from avoiding i can't even say avoiding okay moving processing through disempowering to empowering words rescripting rescripting from what one can call as um limiting words to empowering words because when you're getting your words go in the right direction i'm sure your life will also take the direction that you really intend to do and uh, when you say the choice of words no well done you deserve it keep up the good work great job you are a star somebody comes and tells you you are a star in this you can do only you can do this so well i'm sure it makes you happy so much thank you all for your hard work so there are positive sentences to specifically encourage when somebody is empathetic you can say thank you for your kindness when somebody is very curious i like how you pursue your new ideas um somebody is very cooperative you can say thank you for cooperating it's such an important quality you know um somebody is very resilient you showed enormous strength in handling the situation these descriptive appreciations will instill a lot of courage for the person to continue to be in one's own essence and goodness self awareness i appreciate how self reflective you are it's great to see that you believe so much in yourself that's a very positive thing about you and when somebody has the courage to have integrity it takes courage to stand up for what you are and i'm so proud you could do that and when you find somebody very resourceful i'm glad you asked for your teacher's help your parents help you could really do that you achieved your goal with a lot of hard work and when you feel that somebody is very creative your imagination is awesome your ideas are wonderfully creative and let me remind you uh, people that these four magic words are always a magic please excuse me sorry and thank you please excuse me sorry and thank you they are never outdated they are classic examples of your quality communication wherein it's a greatest indicator for i thou communication where there is respect for the other person respect not in the formal formal way it's more in the deeper connections that you can connect with people i i would like to just share a small anecdote uh, for the power of thank you all those who are from trichy will know the main guard gate and this happened say some 10 to 12 years ago wherein uh, i was driving through the main guard gate and um, in the main guard gate they always sell seasonal flowers and seasonal fruits and vegetables and that was a season of cauliflower and that was a time like when i got to see a vendor was selling cauliflower i thought okay let me get uh, uh, one or two and go home while i was just trying to park my vehicle near the vendor i just saw the previous uh, customer buying a cauliflower for 15 rupees one cauliflower was for 15 rupees so i knew the rate so i went in and asked um so anna how much is the cauliflower in tamil i asked he said um it's uh, one cauliflower is 20 rupees then i just saw and i asked him 20 rupees he said yes 20 20 rupees i was trying all modulations right but then uh, he he got really well he said yes 20 rupees if you want you buy or just leave the place then i thought okay it is really foolish to um bargain with small vendors then i said fine you 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 give me one cauliflower okay and i finish and it in my natural sense i usually when uh, when you get something now i just looked into his eyes and said thank you anna and just took the bag just the moment i turn he said ma wait no for 20 rupees i forgot no it's two cauliflowers the magic that happened is that attitude of gratitude which we consciously say and thank you the act of gratitude is beyond the language be it tamil english any language that we speak 
That is the power of the four magic words that can re script, help us to re-script our positive narratives. Yanala Vanzat said, we language ourselves every day, okay? Instead of saying something, it's very hard, say it's challenging, okay? Instead of being so many, much worried about the test, remember all your tests become testimony because it is so important that you need to understand that you have to focus on the do part of it that helps you. Um, I will just take a minute or so uh, for people who are listening and people who will listen. I just want you to just close your eyes for 10 seconds or 15 seconds. I would want you to just try this. Imagine that you're walking through a forest and you can hear the trees. You can see a beautiful waterfalls in front of you. And you see a lot of flowers and you see a lot of animals. You can look at the animals, but don't see the black monkey that is there. Don't see the black monkey. Don't ever see that black monkey. If you've been closing your eyes, you can just open. I'm sure when I said don't see the black monkey, all of us saw the black monkey. So this is something that can remind us that when we use the don't language, what we're not supposed to do, our mind automatically does that. When I, I should have told you, do see the other animals. Do see the lion, do see the elephant, right? When, when we focus on the language of what we want the other person to do, as Joel Austin says, instead of being trapped by your words, you feel propelled by your words. And that is so beautiful about language, which can recreate a lot of positive affirmation, empowering environment. And when the more you can give strokes and appreciations, um, maybe at the end of the session, let's take time to at least say five good things about what we have seen in our people at home. Maybe you want to text to someone and say uh, something very specifically good about that person. Just see the joy, how it multiplies when you can recreate the positive narrative, affirming someone and always also telling, it. this is for others. And the more you tell yourself, recreate, uh, the limiting words and re-scripting it into enabling words where you can say you're strong, healthy, positive, vibrant, happy, you're full of life, you're full of creativity, you're resourceful, you are confident, you are capable when you can always quite often tell yourself this, what you tell yourself and what you tell others always matters. And in doing so, you can always create a positive, enabling and an empowering environment with the words that you speak even god when he created when he was created everything he used to do language he did not say let the darkness disappear he only said let there be light and there was light that is the power of word words that is the power which we can use in order to bring in more action oriented positive environment where it is more empowering and enabling thank you so much for listening i'm sure this helped you to recreate your positive narration thank you thanks a lot ma'am we'd like to extend our deepest appreciation to our esteemed speaker for her captivating and enlightening speech on positive reinforcement. Not to L, but to tell. Thank you, ma'am, for giving us the four magic words. And that tests will, be, will become testimony sooner. We encourage active participation from all attendees and warmly invite you to share your thoughts, insights, and questions. Your valuable contributions will enrich our discussion and help us explore the topic more deeply. Please feel free to ask any questions you may have using the chat box. We look forward to hearing from you. By the time um, we receive some 
questions from the chat. I think navigating peer pressure and societal expectations can be challenging, ma'am. Can you say how can we build resilience and stay true to our authentic selves while reframing external influences? That's uh, really a very serious question. <laughs> yes, because um, we are always surrounded by the things that we are expected to do. And yes. uh, when it is not aligned with the truest of our spirit, uh, we are um, in the conflict or in the dilemma whether to fix ourselves into what we do not fit or stay true to ourselves. Whenever we know what we are and what we want in life, that kind of self-reflection every day, who am I? Who am I and what is God's purpose of my creation? When I know the purpose for which I am, what am I good at? And uh, what is it that I can give to the world when I can always take time to reaffirm that, practice that, work on that, I'm sure the precious amount around us, that will always stay there. And whatever work you do will resonate to the kind of people who are in the same need. And you will always have criticism. Criticism that are not constructive, I'm sure you will have to leave it as um, slippers and doormat outside. Very easy to say, but very, very difficult to follow. But one thing that has always uh, helped people to grow is set your own community of people who are aligned with your purpose and being uh, and having a connection ritual to your set of people who can see the essence that you are capable of always gives you that kind of resource and strength for you to meet the outside world. And uh, we always also have to develop the courage to be disliked. The courage to be disliked. And it's okay when people don't like us. It will be wonderful when everyone likes us. But in order to be loved and liked, if I have to cut myself, I think I have to cut every part of ourselves, and I will really not be the truest essence. So to make it very simple, understanding who you are and understanding what is the purpose and what is your gift, exercising it, practicing it on a daily basis and also connecting with a small community that can always see you in your essence. And they, you have very good critics. That small community can always say when you're excellent when, and where you can be not so excellent. That will always give you the strength. That would be the support system that we can create. I hope that helps. Thanks a lot, ma'am. Now I'd like to invite Mrs. Majila Jayakumar to kindly come forward and propose the vote of thanks on behalf of all the attendees. Mrs. Majila Jayakumar is employed as a clerk at the Indian Bank at Pondicherry, a proud mother of two and grandmother of three. She cherishes her role in both nurturing her children and embracing the joys of grandparenthood. She commits her time to actively reaching out to individuals and wholeheartedly assisting them, embodying a true spirit of compassion and support. Over to you, ma'am. It gives me great pleasure to be here to say thank you, the four beautiful words that have so much of power. Thank you, doctor, for that wonderful message. And personally, I felt this meeting would not come to an end. It was so very interesting. Many of us have been doing all of this, not knowing that it had so much of personal effect in and around our lives. Thank you so much for opening the eyes of our heart to truly understand that it is so wonderful to be positive and create positivity around us and make people happy. Thank you so much. I thank the organizers for giving us this wonderful message through you today that is going to be a lasting impact on our lives. It's a really takeaway gift. I believe that all of us here, I stand on behalf of every participant here, many were invited but we were the few who were chosen to take up this meet i believe and we really are the lucky lot that we did not miss 
a wonderful session that is really stirring my heart till this moment. With all my heart, I want to say thank you, uh, doctor, for that beautiful message. And thank you, the organizers, for giving all of this and the participants for taking your time and coming and being with us. Thank you, we for you. We are looking forward for more. And thank you all once again. Thank you. As we come to the end of this enriching online meet, I would like to express my sincere gratitude to every one of your active participation. I quote Aristotle, good habits form that you would make all the difference. As we bid farewell, let us carry the inspiration and connections we have built here today into our respective endeavors. I encourage you all to stay engaged, continue learning, and actively contribute to positive change in our communities and beyond. Thank you once again for being a part of this remarkable virtual meet. Wishing you all continued success, growth, and fulfillment in your journeys ahead. Until we meet again, take care and stay inspired.